If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get lots of interesting videos like this one. And if you like the video, it'll really help us out. Please comment down below for any other interesting things that also really helps us out as well. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So let's do an example of the PDA to CFG conversion. So uh, we know the grammar for uh, for zero to the end, one to the end, right? So it's this grammar. But I want to not have to think about what the grammar might look like. I just want to convert the PDA to the CFG. So the PDA for converting a uh, th this PDA into a CFG, well, let's actually look at what the PDA looks like. So this is just going to be the standard a PDA for zero to the end, one to the end. So we push on the dollar sign. Then for every zero we see, we are going to put a zero on. Non-deterministically guess is that we're going to uh, start uh, reading the ones part. Then once we start reading ones, I better pop up the zeros in tandem. And then once we're done, hopefully we have matched everything correctly, at which point we will pop the dollar sign off. Cool. So uh, what we, we can easily see that because the dollar sign is pushed on right here, that it will be popped off right here. That would ensure that the stack actually ends empty, which is one of the steps we had to do. But I'm not going to try to make this, uh, I'm not trying to think uh, uh, very carefully about this. I want to be able to apply this without thinking at all. Okay. Um, and the other thing we've got to make sure of is that we have no transitions that do neither push nor pop, or both. And we, we certainly have one right here. So let's make the modifications that we need. So I'm going to move this over here. So we have some room. And so let's do the first thing, which is that we uh, have a single final state. Well, we already have a single final state, but what I'm going to do is just apply the t construction that we did without thinking um, any about like the structure of this PDA. So here we have again an ep triple epsilon transition. Uh, this state right here will self loop and pop off anything that is not this new special symbol we're going to be putting in in a second. So the symbols that are used in the stack are the dollar sign and the zero. So here I'm going to have epsilon dollar sign goes to epsilon so that it can pop off the, the dollar signs if needed and pop off zeros if needed. And then once we do that, then we need to, uh, or at least this is what we did in the construction, go to a new final state, which is going to have uh, epsilon and a new symbol. I'm going to call it pound sign because we've already used dollar sign earlier and uh, and have it be popped off uh, there. So then at the very beginning the new start state is going to go to the old start state and push on that new special symbol. And we can easily see that the behavior is unchanged because uh, the transitions we add don't read anything so that's not affected. And uh, once we push on a dollar sign here, then we're going to do the zero one business. And then we'll come back here. So from here, if we have a string of zeros and ones in equal number, we'll end up right here, having read the whole thing with an equal number, hopefully. And although we've talked about uh, reasons why it wouldn't actually matter if it wasn't exactly zeros and ones match, but and that's unchanged here too. So uh, this will allow us to pop off anything off the stack if we want to that is not the new symbol. And then this will ensure that we will uh, ha have the stack empty when we come down here. The only uh, the other change we need to make is to ensure every transition does exactly one of the two operations. So the way that we fix this is with this transition and this one we're going to split them up into two different transitions. So let's say I have a, a new state right here. And the trick was to push something on and then pop something, the, the same thing off. So let's say that we're going to 
uh, push a zero on. There's no reason to add another symbol to the stack, but you could if you wanted to. But then if you did add a new symbol here to the stack, like X or something, you would have to add another transition here, but that, that's totally okay. And we'll do the same thing for this transition right here. So let's erase it, add a new state here, and then let's do the exact same thing as before. It doesn't actually matter which way you do this. And I, I, it, it, sorry, it doesn't matter which thing that you put on the stack here, that's what I meant to say. Okay, so I claim that this is all that we need to do, <laughs> all that we need to do, but yeah, so every state, uh, sorry, every transition pushes or pops something. It doesn't do both. And uh, there's a single final state down here, and we ensured that the stack actually does end empty. So let's give these states names, Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, Q6, Q7, Q8. So we... If you recall from what we did before, uh, the first type of rule was to have a sub any state comma the same state going to epsilon. So for type one rules, we will have something like a q zero q zero goes to empty, a q one q one going to empty, etc. Up to a sure it appears, q8, q8, comma, goes to epsilon. So we'll have uh, nine rules right here, because there are nine states. And then for type 2 rules, oops, type 2, we will have something like a, some state, some state, going to two variables over here where the one on the left, so the variable on the left, it has two subscripts. The one on the left is going to be the one that appears in the first variable on the left. The second one over here is what appears in the second variable on the right. And the two in the middle uh, have to be exactly the same because we wanted to go from one state to some intermediate state and from that intermediate state to the end. So as an example, what we could do is that we could do, let's say Q0, Q7. So that means I gotta put a Q0 here and a Q7 at the very end, put some commas in, and I can put any state in the middle uh, that I want to as long as this is the same uh, for both. So let's say I put Q5, that's totally reasonable. And it could be that one of these variables makes no sense. So uh, for example, this one won't make any sense. So let's say Q0, Q3 goes to A, Q0, that's, it still has to appear there. Q3 has to appear at the end because that's what the left variable tells me. And let's say I put Q8 it, as the intermediate state. I, that's a totally valid rule, and it's one that I will put in, but it makes no sense for this particular PDA. Why? Because if it's asking, can, what strings take me from Q0 to Q3 right here? But it's saying uh, one route to go is to go all the way down to Q8, uh, and then from 8 to 3. But there's no path from 8 to 3. That there is from 0 to 8 going through the whole thing, but there's nothing from 8 to 3. So in fact, this variable right here will not actually generate anything. And that's okay. Uh, if I put a useless rule in, it's not going to help. It's not going to hurt. It's not going to help either. But by putting this in, I don't have to think anything about the PDA itself. I can be entirely algorithmic here. Okay, so this is a rule that we'll add in and... This is a rule that we'll add in. We'll add in all 727 other rules. How do I know that's the number? Because for each of these subscripts right here, so this one, this one, and then this is the third one, I have nine choices for each one of them. 
because there are nine states in the whole thing. And they could be the same. So, so it's not like one has to be different. So I have nine times nine times nine different rules. I, actually, no, it was 727, not 725. So there are 729 total rules that are going to be made via this way. And I made two of them, so there will be 727 more. But uh, it's, it's easy to make all these rules. You could just make three for loops, and, and then you're done. Uh, all right, so let's look at a type 3 example. So remember, for type 3, you need to have a pair of matching transitions, ones that one pushes something and the other one pops the same thing. And we can guarantee that there exists a pair because this little step right here, which allowed us to pop everything off. So as long as the PDA actually pushes something at some point, then uh, we will have the match right here. But if it doesn't, then the PDA is actually really simple because if it has no pushing transitions, it can't execute a transition because every transition either pushes or pops. And if no transition pushes, every transition then pops, which means I can never leave the start state or execute any transitions. Okay, so uh, let, let's look at a matching pair of transitions. So let's uh, say we will look at the beginning and the end transition. So this the this blue transition and then this one. And I'll I'll put them down here so it's easier to see. So we have Q0 here going to Q1. And that transition is pushing on the dollar uh, the pound sign. And uh, the last transition is Q7 going to I think it's Q7. Yeah, it's Q7 going to Q8 over here and we will be popping off the pound sign. And I could have equally chosen the other, any other transition that happens to have a pound sign, but these are the only two that happen to have it at all. All right, so what's the recipe here? It's I want to get from Q0 to Q8, so from the pushing one, I start from the, the the start, the state that is the beginning of the transition, which is Q0, and I want to get to the state that's the end of the uh, popping transition. So the rule we'll be adding is a Q0 to Q8. That's my start and my goal. Then what do we read on this transition? Well, it says nothing, so I don't put anything right here. Then whatever takes me from Q1 to Q7, so a q1 q7 and then how do i get from q, uh, 7 to 8 well i don't read anything there and so i don't put anything here so this is the entire rule that is actually made here so let, okay so let's actually do a different example let's do one where one reads and the other one doesn't so this one pushes a zero on and this one put uh, pops off a zero. So let's look at that example. So I think that state was Q2. So I'm going to draw it a little differently. I'm going to have the same, it looks the same, but note that these two states are the same because it's a self loop in the PDA. I'm going to draw it like it isn't a self loop, so it's easier to see. So this one read a zero pop nothing and push to zero. And then the other one was Q7, which was a self loop and it popped a zero. So Q7 going to itself. So again, not drawing like a self loop here. And we will not read anything, pop the zero and push nothing. So the recipe of course, is going from the beginning of the push guy to the end of the pop one so that's a q2 to q7. What did we read on the push transition? We read a zero. Whatever takes me from two to seven, so it's the same variable here, a q2 q7. And nothing read on this one, the pop one, so I don't put anything here. And so this is the rule that will actually be made. And you can actually kind of see why this works. Um, because whatever takes me from here to here, I could um, read a zero, 
and then just ask the question, how do I get from two to seven? Okay, and because the push was done here and the pop here, we can ask the same question again. So this zero, because there's a self loop here that says that, or implies that this rule works because I can just read a zero and then ask the same question again from the same variable because we're eff effectively just starting from wherever we just left off. All right, let's do one, the only, the only one, where we read on both transitions. So this one reads a zero, this one uh, reads a one, and they are matching because the thing that's pushed here is the thing that's uh, popped here. So let's, let's actually look at that. So I know the first one's Q2, the second one is Q4. All right. So we, again, we have Q2 going to itself, which is zero, epsilon goes to zero. And then we have Q4 here going to Q4 on reading a one and then popping the zero off and pushing, and pushing nothing. So if we follow the recipe, uh, we wanna get from two to four so a q2 go, going to q4, going to Cali. Uh, so what did we read on this one? We read a zero. And then whatever we took, whatever takes us from two to four. So a q2 q4. And then what if we reread on this transition, which is a one. So you can actually kind of see the internal, uh, the internal grammar that we usually use to uh, create the to for one for zero to the n one to the n because th this is almost identical to s going to zero s one. It's just that uh, a lot of these other variables are going to either generate nothing or the empty string. <laughs> so so you can kind of see uh, this actually occurring here. Or there's a bunch of unit rules too. And in fact, we saw that right here. There's going to be a lot of unit rules because. A, pretty much every other transition is not going to actually read anything. So, uh, yeah, first you fix the PDA uh, by uh, having a single final state if there are multiple, and to push on a special symbol at the beginning and pop it off at the end, and have this intermediate part right here where we uh, pop off every non-special character. So the other than the thing that you added at the beginning, you pop all of them off right here. And then what you do is you do type one rules, which are A sub whatever state you want with the same state here. These two have to be the same, but you can pick any state that you want to, as long as they're the same in both coordinates. All going to epsilon. Then type two rules is just saying that we have, that you pick any three states that you want. They could all be the same or different or whatever. And then you just follow this simple recipe. This first one is the fir very first one here. The second one is the very last one. And the two in the middle are exactly the same. And then for type three, you just follow this recipe with any pair of matching transitions at all in the entire PDA. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave your questions about the PDA to CFG process down into the comments. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel more. And as always, I'll see you next time.